All right, I am standing in an undisclosed location with Ray and Mike from Sound Space. How's it going, Ray? Great, how are you? <laughs> Doing awesome, and Mike, thank you uh, for, for talking with us and showing us your technology. Thank you for having us, I'm happy to be here. Excellent, well this is really cool technology. I'm a music nerd, been a music nerd for a really long time, so I'm always kind of looking for new ways to control music, and that's exactly what Sound Space is all about. Tell us a little bit about kind of the birth of Sound Space and what it's all about. Sure. Um, so Sound Space kind of came out of the fact that I was an engineering major, but a music minor, and kind of a combination of those two passions. Started uh, creating some electronic musical instruments in college, and somewhere along the lines, I think the third version of, the, of an instrument I created was Sound Space, and then recently we've just ported it to virtual reality, so now you'll be able to create music um, in virtual reality and interact with virtual sounds too. So Mike, uh, this obviously it started differently though. You, you were not doing this with the HTC Vive. When you initially started, you were doing it with a glove system. How did that work prior? So actually the very first system we created was um, using these gloves that we sort of had strings attached to. And the idea was like these strings would, there was a sensor at the bottom of the string that would know where the end point of the string was. And we sort of hacked that together as like a pseudo like 3D tracking mechanism. And then we were lucky enough to get in touch uh, with a company called Ascension that makes um, these 3D electromagnetic trackers for like medical uses. I'm not entirely sure what the uses are, but it, it definitely wasn't making music. But um, <laughs> we just decided to sew them into a pair of gloves. And those are actually really cool because they gave us like 3D um, position and orientation tracking. Um, so we sort of just used that and had a 2D interface at the musician would look at to know where their hands were in in the 3D environment. And um, that was the first prototype before we ported it over to the Vive. I mean, the Vive, the whole virtual reality aspect of this really kind of takes it and makes it makes it a little bit more obvious. Like when you put the, go the sure. goggles on, you start working in the environment, I mean, you want that to be intuitive. Do you, do you think that this is the better direction to go now? Absolutely, and I think both in terms of intuitiveness, how easy it is to pick up, um, and also just in terms of costs, like the sensor we were using before was pretty expensive. But like my, Mike mentioned, uh, we were already kind of doing virtual reality just without virtual reality, without the headset. Really, we, had, we created a virtual space that you could interact with, with these gloves, and now it's just we can see it in front of our, our faces and actually see the space and where your hands are relative to that space. So. So um, I guess explain a little bit about what people will be looking at. I mean, we were playing around with it beforehand. I got to go in totally, you know, without very much walkthrough at all. We, we kind of basic walkthrough of, of controls and everything. And I mean, I was able to jump in and I probably wasn't the best musician in the world using the technology, but it was, uh, it was pretty easy to pick up. What are, the, what are the main components of kind of the interface and what you're doing with it? Sure. Um, so like you said, we're really trying to focus on making it super intuitive and super just kind of like common sense. Like I think when we started this idea, the, the question we were asking is like, what if you could just hold sound and it was like a sound object between your hands and just manipulate it? And I think that's really the direction that we want to go, which is like creating these really physical, fun, interactive sound objects um, that allow you to express yourself. But what's there right now is um, kind of a, a series of boxes that you can uh, place your hands into and each box controls different sounds you can cre create effects and control effects within those boxes um, and really play notes with the trackpad and use the triggers and we also have air drums that you can you know play around with and use it like you expect it to be used so you uh, you schooled me uh, when you played around with it a little bit Mike um, so and I've noticed so I, I, I watched a little bit of the demo online and that was with the the gloves aspect and then now we're in kind of the VR space with this and uh, it's all based around a single type of a single like clip of music let's say a single performance how does this scale out beyond just this one let's say uh, project uh, into other you know people's kind of customized projects mm. so I think one of the things that we envision for this project is sort of having it be uh, more of a platform so Right now, it is sort of geared towards a single piece because we've written this piece, you know, in conjunction with using the gloves, so it's sort of tailored around that. Um, but ideally, you know, you, musicians can come in, they set up their own, like, custom VR spaces in the, in the SoundSpace platform. They set up the boxes and the parameters or whatever instruments we have in the future, exactly how they want. They 
you know, interface of whatever music creation tools they have, maybe it's Ableton, maybe it's Reason, maybe it's whatever, and they sort of tailor it to their own workflow, um, and ideally they would have the ability to customize their own, like, physical space, or I guess virtual space, in a sense, to how they wanted to play music, so that's one of the things we were, like, looking forward to. So in that regard, you're thinking like the almost like the DAW or the software right. that it's interfacing with is where the kind of variability of the sounds and the and the, the the samples and all that kind of stuff are drawing from. This ends up becoming a control surface for it. Yeah, um, I think for the time being, um, I think that people you know VR is still very new, and I think that people are going to be want to use the tools that they're familiar with. But especially as we move towards like this really intuitive kind of consumer product where we really want to transform anybody. Uh, who's not even a musician, and to just like put these on and you can play music and you'll sound great. Um, I think as we move towards that, we're going to be incorporating some of the native sound generation capabilities into our platform so that you won't need to hook it up with an Ableton or a Pro Tools um, to do some of those sounds. Yeah. So, actually, there's actually a band pass filter between your hands, so if you play a note, go and play a note. What do you think about just like music production in general and, and what uh, VR enables for this? Like when I think of just a recording studio environment, for example, so much money has to go into, you know, A, the space, B, the equipment to fill it, C, the, the, the capabilities of the engineer sitting behind the desk. But you end up in a world in, in VR where literally you can, you can lay all that stuff out in a virtual sense and spread it out. Do you think that's kind of where all this stuff is heading right now? What do you think? Um, I think in some sense, but one of the coolest things about VR is that you don't have to limit yourself to the same types of setups that you see in like a, a real recording studio or a real, um, real physical space, right? So one of the th things that VR opens up is like the ability to have like crazy types of like music creation elements. Like, you know, maybe it's like literally like Ray, Ray mentioned, like a blob that you're holding and you're sort of twisting it to like create different sounds. And I think that's one of the areas that, you know, people can be the most creative. Um, that's one of the areas that we're definitely trying to explore. Yeah, it's easy to get locked into the mindset of this is how it's always been done, so let's do this in a different format. And the reality is something like VR actually enables f for you to create sound or manipulate sound in ways that like you, you wouldn't be able to do in the real sense. Absolutely, and I think that it's it's a balance there because again, like you know how I mentioned, we want to build something familiar um, so that people can pick it up and they can integrate with their current you know music software and also create familiar elements that they know maybe from a music studio like mixer, mixing boards and whatnot. But then, but then like begin to expand on that and kind of stretch the you know user's mind as to what they could really be making it um, or how they could be making music in virtual reality. Because if you really think about it. Um, there's so much potential. You have so many more degrees of freedom. You have so much more control. You have three. You have 3D space. You have like a whole world that you can literally shape to be whatever the hell you want. And you can do things like in real life. You can't just change the reverb of a physical room by like making the walls bigger and like changing the physical surface of the walls. But you can do that in virtual reality, and you can have completely virtualized environments that are are flexible and really just awesome. So. Yeah. I was very excited to, to try out this technology before I put the goggles on, and then afterwards, it's like my brain is like running in a million different directions. Like, man, you could do this, you could do that. Uh, it's it's really cool stuff. What is the next step? What's the what's the direction that you guys are, are taking right now? Sure. Um, so I think right now uh, we're here at TechCrunch looking for you know advisors and potentially investors um, to, so that we can, we can really go full time on this project and roll out that prototype right, uh, right, right now it is just kind of a, a demo running on our machine but roll it out to all the Steam store to all the you know online channels to get this out and just start getting people to use it see what they think get their ideas like you have you had great ideas we're going to try to incorporate some of those <laughs> we'll probably take all the credit but <laughs> That's all right. you can take that because then I get to use it later absolutely um, and then really Really just getting people to use it and, and just continuing to refine it to be what people want. So excellent. Well, it was really exciting stuff, and I love kind of where it began yeah. and kind of where where it's heading here. How long do you think it's going to be before people can get their hands on it? Honestly, um, probably within a few months. Like I would say six months at most. Um, and and then uh, 
And I think I mentioned earlier, um, but music is just the first step for us, and we really want to expand beyond that in the future and look towards just content creation in general and like what you can do with 3D workspaces in terms of allowing people to express their imagination and creativity. So, all right, Ray, a pleasure talking with you about Soundspace, Great. Mike. Uh, pleasure. Uh, really cool stuff. I, now apparently I have to get an HTC vibe because once this comes out, I have to uh, manipulate my own music with this.